All right, 2010 Subaru Forester with a 2.5 liter engine. Uh, this is a non-turbo model. The trouble code that we're going to address is the P0028. That's um, INT valve control solenoid circuit range performance. This is gonna be on bank two. Uh, the code right underneath this one, this P0082, we need to ignore that code. We set that code in our testing process. And what we're gonna do is we're going to test this solenoid, test the switch that's part of the VTEC system or intake valve control system, they're calling it. We're gonna test it with my methods and then we're gonna compare it to what the engineer flowchart has you do and we'll see which one you guys like better. Okay, the next part of this video, what I wanna do is show you guys how to do circuit identification. How do you know what you're dealing with? Um, this is a uh, some type of VTEC system. I'm not familiar with the uh, mechanics behind it, but I do know the electronics. It works like a lot of the other ones. Uh, what they're using is a, a two-wire solenoid right here with the light blue connector. That's a two-pin, two-wire hydraulic solenoid that's gonna control oil to a mechanism. And then just above that in the, in the screen, the white plug, which is right here, is a oil pressure switch. Um, if this was a Honda, it would be called a VTEC solenoid and it would be called a VTEC oil pressure switch. Different terminology for this Subaru, same concept. So we have a switch and we have a solenoid. And the first thing that we wanna do if we want to use my method of testing is we need to be able to identify circuit design. How does the switch work? How does the solenoid work? So let's address the switch first. Um, there's one method that we can use, and that's gonna be a wiring diagram. That's gonna be key. So we pulled the diagram. We're gonna take a look at it. And our switch, our two switches, I have them um, in orange highlighter already. We're dealing with the left side. Uh, left side of this engine is bank two. Of course, there's a little more homework you'd have to do to figure that out, but the left side is bank two. And you can see that it is a single pin, single wire switch. It's called an oil pressure switch. And what we know about that switch being a single wire is it's grounded on the housing and therefore it has to be a pull down design switch. So you can also identify with this with a voltmeter and I'm gonna show you that next. Okay, we're gonna do a little bit of switch input circuit identification with a voltmeter. I have a T-pin connected to this white connector, which is my, my oil pressure switch. I have my yellow lead to my multimeter connected. And um, using the Snap-on Vantage here, uh, just has a, a big voltage screen, very nice for the video. You can use a regular voltmeter for this. The key is on, and you see in the picture we have low voltage, really 0.2, basically zero volts on that, on that wire. If what we said is true by the wiring diagram that this is a pull down design, that means two things. One, this switch is closed right now, pulling it to ground. And two, when I unplug this connector, that voltage should come up to whatever the source is, probably going to be 12 on this vehicle. So I'm just gonna reach down, leaving my T-pin connected, leaving my, my gauge connected. Except my lead just came off. reach down and I'm gonna unplug it and you see with the switch unplugged that does in fact match what our suspicions are is this is a pull down switch input so right away what we know so far about this circuit that switch input signal circuit is fine and we also know that this switch itself is normally closed this is a normally closed oil pressure switch oil pressure is going to open this switch Okay, next piece of circuit identification, we're gonna deal with the solenoid now, and that's gonna be our, again, our blue connector down here in this picture. And we're gonna go to the diagram first and see what the solenoid looks like. And we're looking at this uh, left oil switching solenoid valve in the diagram, and you see the two wires that I have highlighted already. Now, this one is a little bit difficult because both wires go to the computer. And so when you have a solenoid that both wires go to the computer on, you cannot identify polarity 
with the wiring diagram as I've taught you. You know, we said use a wiring diagram, follow the wire that doesn't go to the computer, always tells you what control is in the computer. On this design, both wires go to the computer. So in my experience, what I found when you see both wires of a solenoid go to the computer, is the computer is going to switch the positive side of that circuit. I have yet to see a solenoid that was ground side switched having both wires go to the computer. Now why do they do it this way? I can't answer that. Obviously it's for circuit monitoring that they're doing it this way, but there is a way that we can identify which of the two wires is the control and that it is in fact power side switched. All right, so what we're gonna do first is we're gonna get some voltage readings on these two wires using a voltmeter, and we're gonna confirm that this is in fact a power side switch circuit. Um, right now, we do know the solenoid is off. There would be no reason with the key on that this VTEC solenoid would be energized. So if this was ground side switch, we would see 12 volts on both wires, on both the power and the control. It's not being turned on. If it's power side switch, we're gonna see zero volts on both wires. So I'm just going to the wire to the left first, take a voltage reading, and I'll just get you up on the, uh, on the meter here in a second. So you know I'm just going to move that T-pin over for the second shot. And you see we have 0.02 which is basically zero volts on that one wire. So I'm gonna move the T-pin to the other wire and I'll just keep you focused on the screen here. Moving over now to the other wire, reading 0.02 of a volt. So that confirms to me that this is power side switched, it's just not being turned on yet. Now is there a way that we can figure out which of these two wires at this solenoid is the side that's being switched and which is the side that's grounded all the time. You wouldn't think having a ground wire all the time that they would run it back to the computer, but they do. And there is a way we can figure this out. And I want to show that to you. It's a simple test. Think about the circuit. It's power side switched. That means that one side's going to be grounded all the time, and the other side's going to be switched positive. So we take a test light to battery positive and we touch on the two pins. With it unplugged, I'm going to figure out which one of these two the test light lights on. Test light's lighting on that wire. I'm going to get my test light in my screen here. So I got my test light connected to battery positive. Test light lights when it hits the ground. Touch it on the T-pin. See the test light's lighting on that one. Move the T-pin over to the other wire. Again, I'm back probing. I don't want to mess up the female pins on the front side. Touch the test light on this one. Test light is not lighting. So what that means to me is my yellow with a green tracer is the switched power side of this circuit. Okay. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to manually energize this solenoid. We're going to look for the VTEC oil pressure switch to change. And then we're going to go from there. All right, so here's the plan. This is what we're going to do. We're going to take this solenoid. We're going to energize the solenoid ourselves while we are watching the VTEC oil pressure switch. What we should see is we should see the voltage change on the VTEC oil pressure switch when the solenoid is energized. If it does, that tells us the solenoid's functional, that tells us the passages internal are, are clear, and that tells us that this VTEC oil pressure switch works as it's designed. Now when we do this, we're going to use the existing wiring on the car to provide the power or ground that we need. In our case, we determined that we need a power. It has a constant ground. If you do this part wrong, you will fry the engine computer. So a safer method if any of you are unsure of what I'm doing, is to disconnect this solenoid and run your own power and ground to it. That would be the safer method. I'm gonna show you the method that I'm, I'm gonna use on this. And again, if there's any questions, if you do this wrong, you're gonna cook the computer.
It is that simple. And this is what, a $2,000 computer? So we need to be $2,000 confident in what we're doing right now. All right, so I have my T-pin um, installed. My setup is this. My yellow probe is connected to my VTEC oil pressure switch. And you see that I'm at 0.1 of a volt. Basically nothing on that circuit right now. That switch is closed. What we want to see is that switch open. What I'm going to do first is show you the wire that I'm connected to again on the solenoid. I have this wire T-pinned. This is going to light. The reason my test light is lighting is that's going through the solenoid to ground inside of the board of the computer. Unplug this and you're going to see that that light is not lighting. So I don't want to be on the, on the ground wire. If you're on the ground wire for this test, you're going to cook this computer. So I'm on the controlled power wire. The reason it's lighting is it's not dropping all the voltage across that bulb because the resistance of the solenoid is high and it's taking that into account. This test light, unfortunately, is not going to be enough current flow to energize this solenoid. I prefer the test light. What we're going to have to use is a jumper wire. A jumper wire, in this case, is where you're going to get yourself in trouble if you don't know what you're doing. Now, I'm confident enough, the key is on, the engine's not running right now, to give this wire 12 volts. We should hear a click when we do it. So listen. Okay. So we have identified the circuit properly. We know that that's the switched wire. We know the computer switches power to that wire. That solenoid, at least sound-wise, is functional. What we want to see with the engine running is this VTEC uh, oil pressure switch. Voltage change when I do this step. So I'm going to start the car now. Same test, engine running. We'll hear a little bit of an RPM drop. Watch the voltmeter. Went to 14 volts. Show you again. All right, what that test just told us, by me energizing that solenoid manually, and my, my oil pressure switch changing is that solenoid is functional and that switch is functional. And really, truly, the only thing left in this process for this trouble code is to make sure that my control wire from the computer to the solenoid is functional. And that's as simple as putting a voltmeter on that and taking a reading of it, maybe a scope, looking for an on-off signal at certain loads and speeds. And right now, this is showing the system to be to be completely working like it should be. So where is our trouble code coming from? We'll find out here in a minute. All right, the last part in our system check, as I just mentioned, is our control wire from the computer to the oil pressure solenoid. We need to make sure that that's functional. We need to make sure that the driver is functional and can turn the solenoid on. So I'm connected to that control wire and I'm I'm um, uh, in a scope setting now, I want a faster time base so I can see on off pulsing. And what we want to do is we want to watch this yellow trace on the screen. I'm going to start the car. You can see on this design, that they're using some type of a pulse width modulated control to this solenoid. Uh, in fact, we could measure the duty cycle of that right now. Something else I want to put on the screen with my second channel is my VTEC switch. We'll get a switch reading the same time we're getting a, a control reading for the, uh, for the solenoid. You see that my switch voltage is at 0 0.05. So this pulsed on-off signal we're looking at is not enough right now. It's not enough of a magnetic field to open this solenoid. Now what we don't know is what load and what speed that it's going to change that. We tried revving it here. We can't get it to do it in the shop. It probably needs to be driven. But truthfully, this signal in itself right now with this square wave tells you that the control wire from the computer to the solenoid is good. 
and they, they were done. I mean, this whole entire system is working like it's supposed to. We followed a manufacturer flow chart. We didn't follow a flow chart that had you uh, do some crazy stuff in step one, which was disconnect the computer, disconnect the solenoid, and start doing some ohm tests. Now, this method's much faster, it's much better. However, a little bit on the unsafe side if you don't know what you're doing. Um, I'm gonna show you this duty cycle signal. I'm gonna get out of here. I'm gonna go to duty cycle. This is gonna be my channel one duty cycle. And you see that that's showing a, a percentage. We guessed it was about 80%, didn't we, earlier? We're at 79.5%, and that is our low time. So in this tool, you need to understand that the low portion of that signal compared to the high portion, it's giving you the low portion of that. Let me go back to my scope. And if you look at this square wave, you can see that the low portion compared to the high is in fact 80%, low 20% high. So what we have right now is a 20% duty cycle to this valve, and here's what we know, 20% is not enough to energize the solenoid. Why they're using a 20% duty cycle at idle when we're not even doing anything with this component, I'm not sure, but they are, and there you can see it. This circuit's working fine. Everything electrically is good. It took us five minutes to do it. We didn't have to get to the computer, disconnect the computer, ohm wiring. The system's fine. All right, so with everything checking out electrically on this car, uh, one of the concerns you always have with a, with a VTEC code is, uh, is oil level. We wanna make sure that we have enough oil in this car. And pull the stick out and take a look at this. And, and there's literally nothing on that stick at all. So we're low on oil, that needs to be corrected. I believe that's our problem with this car. Um, the last thing is going to be that we need to make sure, um, I wanna make sure you guys didn't get bad information. What I said was that 20% duty cycle that we saw on this solenoid at idle was not enough magnetic field strength to open and make that switch move. Now we don't know that because there isn't enough oil in this car. So I think the last thing is gonna be let's put oil in it and let's redo that last part and take a look and see what that looks like. Um, I'm not sure it's still gonna move. That doesn't change anything. You see what our problem was, low on oil on this car. All right, so we filled this thing up with oil, redoing the idle test. You see that 20% duty cycle is still not enough to open up this oil pressure switch. Uh, it's gonna be certain loads and RPM combinations. Can I get uh, Devin, you to jump in here and, and snap this a couple times and see if we get a command change? Oh, you know what, before you do that, I'm gonna wanna clear these trouble codes. And the reason you wanna clear trouble codes is certain outputs will be disabled with a trouble code in memory. Let me make sure that they're gone. Okay, I cleared the codes out of the memory. You go ahead and uh, snap the throttle for me a couple times. Go ahead, snap it. Do it again. Hold your RPMs up. That was a good, that was good. It would look like about four grand this changed. Uh, let me change my scales on this green tray so you can see it. I'll go to a 50 volt. And if you watch this, this part of the screen right here, you'll see the voltage number. And you saw that number jump up. You saw our duty cycle change. Um, go ahead and do that again for me. Uh, give me an RPM number. No, it was a steady throttle. Give me like three grand. Okay. 
So about 3,500 RPM is where this computer, you see the on time change, which is our top section. Remember, in this waveform, the on time is the high portion because it's power side switched. You see the on time increase. That looks like maybe about, I don't know, 60% maybe, where we were at 20% before. And what that did is that's enough magnetic field strength now. And you see that VTEC oil pressure switch signal change. Uh, when we did this in the first place, this did not react this way. Uh, so again, when you have a trouble code in memory, certain outputs are disabled. And of course we had an oil issue, uh, but that's it. Uh, I think that's a fix. You can take this car, no codes present now. And uh, that's a fully functional system. I have no problem giving this back to the customer. All right, so let's look at this flow chart, and maybe you guys will get an idea of why I do things the way I do them. Um, starting at the beginning, our DTC P0028, and you know this is a, a Mitchell program, but you guys need to understand this isn't is, this isn't Mitchell that writes this flow chart. This is the engineer. This is what this is what they get from the engineers at Subaru on this car. And uh, gives a little description, the trouble symptom of improper idling. You, know, you can click on the wiring diagram, which is helpful. It shows you the computer connector and things like that. But <clears throat> let's start at step one. Step one of this flow chart says to, number one, check the harness between the ECM and variable valve lift diagnosis oil pressure switch. Check the harness. So it tells you to warm up the engine, turn the ignition off, disconnect connectors from the ECM and variable valve lift diagnosis oil pressure switch. So step one of this flow chart, they want me to dig the computer out disconnect the connector and find the pin and ohm the wire between the computer and the oil pressure switch. Well, knowing it's a pull down design circuit and just doing a simple voltage measurement and unplugging the circuit showing us battery voltage or 12 volts in our case, uh, told you that that circuit was okay. Now you tell me which one's easier. Next one. Check variable uh, or check harness between ECM and variable valve lift diagnosis oil pressure switch. So we're doing the same thing, but this time we are connected to ground. And so now what we're doing is a short to ground test on that same wire. And so once again, my test disconnect the solenoid, sorry, disconnect the switch, voltage jumped up to battery voltage. It's a pull down circuit design. If that switch was shorted to ground, it would be zero volts there. So again, didn't need to do that. Step three is to check the, uh, the same circuit for a short to power. And again, it's the same kind of tests. Um, no reason to uh, check for a short to power on this circuit. The circuit was working fine as it should be. Step four tells you to clear the codes after checking all that other stuff. And it tells you to uh, clear the codes. And then um, after engine idling, if the code comes back, to replace the oil switching solenoid valve. And when you refer to, if you click on refer to oil switching solenoid valve, all that is is an R&R &R procedure. Um, so this is probably one of the worst flow charts I've ever seen. Um, there, it makes no mention of replacing the switch. Um, it's saying to replace the solenoid valve. And then it also makes no mention of checking the solenoid whatsoever. So if the switch circuit ohms fine, they're telling you to replace the switching solenoid valve. Um, you know, is that a misprint? I don't know, uh, but this is, that's it, man. That, that is a horrible, horrible flow chart. You know, there's no mention of the switch itself being uh, possibly needing to be replaced. Um, not to mention the computer could be at fault. It does address the harness for the switch, but that's it. Um, no mention of solenoid circuit wiring testing. I mean, it's ridiculous. This is what we deal with in this field. And you know what, I'm, I'm, frankly, I'm fed up with it, man. These engineers need to get uh, with the program here and figure out that, you know what, we have a little bit more brains than you think we do. And why don't you tell us how the circuit works, please? Tell us the stuff that I'm teaching. Tell me if it's pull up or pull down. Tell me if it's power or ground side switch, if it's pulse width modulated or not, or what kind of signal on a scope should I see on this wire. This would be a huge, huge help to us in this field. Please, if any of you guys are listening to this, help us. This is ridiculous. We can't follow these. You cannot do troubleshooting on a flow chart 
like this.